Today I'm talking you through how I set up my brand new M4 MacBook Pro for programming. Now I know there's always a debate about what the best machine is for coding. For me, it's a MacBook Pro hands down. I think it's not just about the design, although if we're going to admit it, it does look amazing. The real strength I think is in the operating system, which is super developer friendly. Many tools just work out of the box and the ecosystem supports everything from web development to machine learning. The M4 chip is an absolute beast, so whether I'm coding, testing software or running virtual machines, this laptop doesn't break a sweat. Plus, the battery life is incredible. If I'm being honest, this is actually an M1 Pro, but for the sake of the title, the setup process is the same. The previous points still stand, the M1 chip is still a beast for programming. While this isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial per se, I'll explain why I use each app and tool to give you some inspiration for your own development setup. So before actually going and talking about the MacBook itself, I think it would be good to add some context as to what languages and frameworks I use whether it be when I started to learn to code or in my day job as a software engineer, just so it gives some context as to how I actually set up my MacBook. So when I actually started to learn programming, my journey starts about two years ago or about a year and a half ago. And that's when I started to learn to code after graduating from university. And I started off by learning JavaScript. Now, the main reason for learning JavaScript for me was because I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into front end or back end. So for me, JavaScript was easiest just because one of the most popular, if not the most popular front end framework is actually React, which is JavaScript based. But in my day to day job as a software engineer, I'm actually using Java the most. So that's just a little bit about my background in software engineering, the languages I use, the frameworks I use. So I think that will just give you an idea of how I have actually set up my laptop for engineering. Because I know if you use a different um, language or framework, obviously it will be a little different. But the core concepts are still there with my setup. For example, a lot of the package managers and stuff, that's uh, very much applicable across different languages and frameworks. So yeah, I just thought I'd jump in and give you a little bit of context. But with that being said, let's actually go on to the setup now. First, let's start with the basics, getting the system settings right. So the first thing that I love to do is pick a good wallpaper. I pick a clean, minimal wallpaper that isn't overpowering, but also looks clean. It's a small touch, but adds personality and keeps the workspace fresh and has the most impact. Second thing that of course I'm gonna do is enable dark mode. Dark mode is easier on the eyes, especially for those late night coding sessions. And it also just looks sleek, which is a vibe I like to keep. Obviously you don't need to do this to yours, but are you even a real programmer if you don't? Thirdly, what I'm gonna do is declutter the dock. So I like to remove all unnecessary apps from the dock and shrink it down to a more manageable size. I think it's all about keeping things minimal so I can focus on the work without distractions. Apart from removing those apps, I also changed some settings, for example, turning on minimize windows into app icon, auto hiding the dock, and turning off show suggested. These little tweaks may seem minor, but for me, they make a big difference in creating a productive environment. A few other settings I like to change are in the finder window. I ensure that I've made a developer folder in my MacBook's root. A lot of people don't know this, but if you make a folder with a capital D, you'll get this hammer icon. And here is where I add all of my source code for projects so that the code can be differentiated from other documents and is out of the way. I also like to keep the quick access menu on the side for folders I genuinely use regularly. So I end up removing a lot of them so that is not cluttered. Documents and other iCloud folders usually stay and also don't forget to add your developer folder here so that you can access that quicker too. Onto the fun stuff now and that's the apps that I like to use. These are the tools I use every day and I'll explain why I love to use them. First of all, let's talk about the terminal of choice for me. Now, Warp is my go-to terminal app, and honestly, it does feel revolutionary compared to the standard terminal or even iTerm2. Firstly, the speed. I think it's super fast and smooth, which makes even the most tedious command line tasks feel really snappy. I really like the built-in AI suggestions and feel like they are really a game changer. For example, it can auto-complete commands, suggest corrections if I make a typo, or even explain certain commands if I am unsure about what they actually do. For someone like me who spends a lot of time in the terminal, this app is a no brainer. Secondly, I have an app called Rectangle installed and I can't stress how much I actually love this app. It is simple yet powerful and it allows me to snap windows into place with keyboard shortcuts or dragging them. Next is an app called Hidden Bar. As you may or may not know from previous videos, I am a huge fan of minimalism and Hidden Bar helps me achieve this by decluttering my menu bar. With a simple click, you can hide icons that you don't need to see all the time like background apps or utilities. 
abilities. And I think it keeps the screen looking focused and clean and it allows me to work without distractions. Next is a really good app called Itzikao. Itzikao is a lightweight calendar app that sits neatly in the menu bar. I love how simple it is. It's really, really simple. It's just a quick glance will show you the date, upcoming events and the schedule for the day. It's perfect for staying on top of meetings or deadlines without having to open a full-fledged calendar app. And it really does integrate seamlessly with Mac's native calendar, so it pulls in all of my events automatically. Hand Mirror is an app I installed just out of pure convenience. Before jumping on a meeting, I can quickly check how I look without opening a full camera app or waiting for teams to load. It's simple, fast, and has saved me from countless awkward moments. Now let's talk about the real development tools. These are the ones that I like to rely on to get things done. Firstly, and I think one of the biggest apps that I use and I would really recommend for developers to install is an app called Homebrew. This is a macOS package manager that simplifies installing and managing software on your system. You can sort of think of it as an app store, but for developers. It lets me quickly install tools such as Git, Node.js and other apps. And what I love about it, Homebrew is that it handles dependencies for me and ensures I always have the latest or specific versions of software without hassle. Whether it's installing the latest coding tools or managing utilities, Homebrew is a must-have for any developer using a Mac. It's a very powerful tool and the community behind it keeps it updated with the newest packages. My code editor of choice is VS Code and I use it over other editors such as JetBrains as I've customized it with extensions like Prettier and GitLens for example for version control insights amongst other extensions. The integration with GitHub is also seamless, it's lightweight, powerful and if you're wondering, the theme I am using is Halicon. These are the tools that make my workflow efficient and enjoyable, plus they're all highly customizable, which means I can adapt them to fit my preferences. Next up, I always set up Node.js for JavaScript development. I actually use NVM or Node Version Manager to manage different versions of Node, and you should definitely do that too. It is super helpful if you're working on projects that require older versions or you want to stay up to date with the latest releases for Node. Why Node.js? Well, because it's lightweight and versatile and perfect for building fast applications. So whether I'm working on a side project or even contributing to open source projects, Node.js is my go-to for backend and full stack development. I also take the time to configure Git with my username and email, which ensures that my commits are properly linked to my GitHub profile. And of course, I do also add a global git ignore to keep those pesky DS store files out of my repos. I use Git because it is the backbone for version control and whether you're collaborating with a team or working solo, it is essential. Last but not least, I like to personalize my terminal and overall setup. One of the main things that I'm gonna do is download a framework called Oh My Zish or Oh My ZSH, depending on how you pronounce it. And it just comes with a lot of plugins and themes for your terminal. I didn't say out fully on camera, but I do use a theme called Agnosta for a clean and informative prompt. And that is my complete setup for programming on the new M4 MacBook Pro, or in my case, the M1. So from essential apps to powerful development tools, this machine is a productivity powerhouse. If you did enjoy this video, drop a like and subscribe for more content like this. Let me know in the comments what your favorite tool programming app is, and I'd love to hear your recommendations. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.